throughout this offseason, uh, there were a lot of moments where I doubted Eric DaCosta. Uh, I doubted that he was going to get the deal done with Lamar Jackson for the longest. Uh, but then there was a turning point where I was like, OK, maybe there is some hope. Uh, but then when he talked about really revamping this wide receiver room, I was really skeptical about it. Cause I was like, oh, I feel like we done heard something like this before. And then when I look back at the past four or five years, I'm like, oh, I, I just I don't see it happening like that. Uh, but then he signed Nelson Aguilar, and I was like, oh, okay, okay. I, um, it's a slow start, but let, let's see how it goes. And then after that, from that point on, he never stopped. I mean, he just added another wide receiver like two two days ago because they brought back Makai Polk. So he really stuck to his word. And from some of those receivers, it's been nice getting to hear uh, what they have to say about this Baltimore Ravens team and their roles on the team and just how they feeling uh, about being a Raven. Uh, and one of the biggest, probably the biggest addition at wide receiver this offseason has been Odell Beckham Jr. And whenever he speaks, it's, it's very nice to listen and hear what he has to say because Odell Beckham Jr. has obviously been through a lot. He's been through the highest of highs in the NFL, and he's also been through the lowest of lows in the NFL. Uh, and I feel like when you have the highs, when you got the good stuff going on, it can make it very, it, not necessarily harder to appreciate, but you may not appreciate stuff as much if you only experience in highs and, and joy and the great moments and all that. But when you hit a low, and we all know from personal experience, when you hit that low, it makes you reflect like, man, I guess I, maybe I should have appreciated it more when stuff was going good. But then when you get back on your feet, it's like, oh, you find a newfound appreciation for just everything. And you don't take stuff for granted. You appreciate every little thing that there is. And that's exactly what I took from Odell Beckham Jr. It sounded like he really just appreciated this moment, him being able to play football again. And let's get into his part of the presser. Uh, he talked about the first day of training camp, and he said he wanted to just be grateful for the moment because he didn't have that moment uh, last year. He didn't play football for a whole year. Like, uh, and, and imagine that for a second. Imagine if you are a player who ha ha has been one of the best at your position, and since you you wanted to, you were one of the best at your position, but then what you do, even if you even if you're not one of the best at your position, but something that you do for for a living. And it's taken away from you. It's taken away from you. Due to whatever the circumstances is, but in this case, due to injury, it got taken away from him. He didn't play for a whole year. And you got to watch all these people that you know. You got to watch all these people that you played with. You were right there in the field next to them. But you can't play. That, that, that's got to be a crushing blow. A crushing blow. And especially after coming off of the high that he had came off of. Because he was looking to be Super Bowl MVP. And if, even if he wasn't the MVP, he, was, he won a Super Bowl. So you come off with the highest of the highs that you can get in the NFL. Because there's only one team that can win a Super Bowl every single year. Plenty of people make the Pro Bowl. They got all pro guys. Then they got the guys that go to the Hall of Fame every year and whatnot. But there can only be one Super Bowl winner every single year. So to come off of that and instead of being like, all right, what are we going to do this year? How, how are we going to do this year? Let's try to hold down the Super Bowl again. Let's try to run it back again. No, you didn't even play. You couldn't play because of your injury. That's got to be crushing. So with Odell Beckham Jr., he, he, he talked about really being grateful uh, in the moment. Uh, he said when he was a rookie and seeing all of the families come up to the players, uh, he said ha now him being in their shoes, him having his son come up to him after practice, it was surreal. And that's real right there because as a father, I wasn't always a father, and I'm sure plenty of your fathers and mothers can experience this too. When before you become a parent, you may look around at other people you know. You may you may love kids or whatnot. Some of y'all may not have even liked kids. Hopefully, hopefully after you become a parent, you do like kids. But uh, either way, you may uh, whether you like kids or not. Before you may have seen these other parents and stuff that you knew with their kids and whatnot, and just been looking and wondering how how that would be for you, how that experience would be for you. Uh, but then when it actually happens, like when it really happens, it it it, it is different because it's you, it's yours, it's your child or children so i completely understood what odell beckham jr saying with that one uh he said uh because somebody asked him about the, the the shape that he was in they said man from any camp you're looking like you you really been working and he talked about it's about a gradual peak he said they play games in september and he said if, you, if you're ready to play a game in mini camp then when is that downward slope gonna start uh because 
he talked about just wanting to peak at the right time. Similar to, similar to what Lamar talked about a couple years back, just wanting to peak at the right time. But Odell was talking about the physical peak, too. So it said it's, it's, it's about maintenance and, and consistency and not doing too much too early. Uh, he also talked about um, how his last training camp was in 2021. So, again, a long time ago, he said uh, the things he used to have small complaints about this part, I really appreciate. I mean, I appreciate a lot of what he said, but this part for sure. He said the things he used to have small complaints about, uh, he said that he was trying his best so you wouldn't hear those complaints out of him. So, again, just really being more grateful and appreciative of the situation and him being able to do what he loves again since it was taken away from him. Now, Cordell Woodland, shout out to Cordell, man. He's been asking some fire questions as usual. Cordell is that dude, man. But anyway, Cordell asked OBJ about the difference uh, with Munkin in Cleveland versus uh, Munkin with the Ravens and the culture and whatnot. Uh, and OBJ said life's all about situations. Not every situation is for everybody. And he talked about how Munkin went on to Georgia and, and won national championships. Because in Cleveland, I mean, he obviously wasn't doing that. But it was just... And, and I think Odell Beckham Jr. mentioned this before. Or was it Tom Munkin that mentioned it before? One of the two mentioned before how maybe with Cleveland it was just possibly the, the, the wrong place at the wrong time. Because once both of them left Cleveland, Munkin went on to Georgia, two, two national championships. Odell Beckham Jr. went to the Rams, Super Bowl. Coincidence? Hey, who knows? Um, and he said that with Todd Munkin, he really has a command of what he's seeing and says Munkin has a high level of confidence in the offense. And he seems like he's really happy uh, to be with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, and then he also talked about uh, somebody who will go over that part of the press in a little bit, Zay Flowers. He talked about Zay Flowers' smile, his joy, and he could tell that Zay really appreciates uh, being there. Uh, and he said they continue to pick each other's brain. And, and Odell Beckham Jr. talked about his role, uh, especially being a little older. Uh, he said that he's a, both a leader and a follower. And this is something else I appreciated about Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, is what, 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 what he's been saying, he remains consistent in saying it. Because he said this exact same thing in his introductory press with the Baltimore Ravens. And he talked about how leaders, they got to be followers as well. And you got to be willing to listen too. Um, he was asked about if, if he has any limitations uh, from being back from injury. And he said no. His only limitation is that it's hot. Uh, Odell, I mean, I know you done been down here plenty of times But just imagine the Florida heat But anyway, he says that once you know uh, everything As far as the playbook and everything That's when you can really play fast And that's true Like, and that's with anything that you do When you first start learning something uh, You're not going to be full go at it It's going to take some time But once you actually get it down You're like, okay, I know that, I know that Okay, I know what to do in this situation I got, and That's exactly what it is with football um, he talked about how his experience, it helps him be a mentor, a mentor or a leader uh, to the younger players. And he said he's been around guys like Victor Cruz, Eli Manning, Cooper Cup, Matt Stafford. Uh, and he said he embraces the opportunity to be the leader uh, of these young men that he's around. And he doesn't mind being the older guy for once. Uh, and he talked about how he can really feel the love of the city of Baltimore. And that's real right there. That's that's real right there. Uh, and he said he takes it very, very serious. He, he said he has to learn how to do uh, the strut. I'm sure he's talking about the park height strut. He also mentioned the bird flu, which he did as an L.A. Ram in Baltimore. But he can make up for it by scoring a bunch of touchdowns and all that and doing whatever dances he want to do as a Raven there. Um, and he also brought up the, uh, the the Baltimore accent, man. Or should I say the Baltimore accent, my fault. And, he, and what he said, he said two and through and ooh and goo and all that good stuff. But yeah, shout out to Odell Beckham Jr., man. I, I, I really appreciate because not all players do that. And players don't have to do that. Like their job is to go on the field and do whatever, whether they defensive player, make tackles, get interceptions, offensive player, throw the ball, make catches, score touchdowns. That's their job. All the extra stuff, embracing the city and whatnot, they don't have to do that. But when they do do that, you appreciate them so much more. Because when they talk to people, when they can relate to people, when they try to get to know people and try to get to know the area and whatnot, yeah, you appreciate that. And you got a lot of extra love for, the, for whoever that player may be. In this case, obviously, Odell Beckham Jr. Again, when people do stuff that they don't have to do, that's why I appreciate y'all so much, man. So y'all don't have to watch these videos, what y'all do. Y'all don't have to support the channel, what y'all do. That's why I appreciate y'all so much, because y'all do the extra stuff. The same way with Odell Beckham Jr. We appreciate him, because he does the extra stuff. So shout out to Odell, man. 
Uh, he said Ravens also have everything you look for in a defense. And he said they present a challenge to him every single day. And that that's going to help him prepare. And he also talked about how Lamar Jackson, he just really wants to win. So shout out to Odell Beckham Jr. Man, he had some other stuff to say. You could check out the presser to see every little bit of detail of what he had to say. But um, that was pretty much the gist of it. Uh, another wide receiver who EDC brought in to really help revamp this wide receiver room was Zay Flowers. Uh, and Zay Flowers was the Baltimore Ravens' first round pick. It was a surprise to some, uh, but some people, they felt like Zay Flowers was going to go to the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, and Zay Flowers, he, he talked about um, the, he started off talking about how uh, Lamar Jackson gave him the nickname Joystick. He said that was actually his brother's nickname, but he said uh, he'll carry it on now. He get to take it over. Uh, he's talked about how he's just trying to learn from Odell Beckham Jr., but then put his own spin on stuff. Um, he talked about how Lamar, when they were down in South Florida, how Lamar was teaching him about delaying on routes and being patient. And not, not always like speeding through everything because Zay talked about how he likes to do everything fast. But Lamar told him, like, slow, slow down, slow down. You, you get it. And that's, that's leadership right there. And that's important. That's important to have somebody to take you under their wing and really show you the ropes. So that's a good job by Lamar and great job by Zay Flowers, too. Uh, he talked about how Todd Munkin uses everybody's ability to the best uh, and he said that how they'll rotate wide receivers inside and outside and whatnot. Somebody ain't just going to be in the slot. They'll be outside on the right side. They'll be outside on the left. They'll, they'll move them around. So that's a beautiful thing. We're seeing is believing. We, we got to see it for ourselves. But, again, when we hear about the different things that the offense is doing, so much of it talks, sounds like stuff that we've talked about for years and, and, and us just hoping that they would implement these different things in the offense. But we'll see how it goes when we get there. Uh, he talked about how NFL practices are actually a little easier than college practices. Now, NFL, the rules are obviously different. Um, NFL, they usually try to chill on a lot of the practices and whatnot, not go too hard, especially because these guys are getting paid. Well, now college guys are getting paid too, but um, th these guys, they, they're getting paid a lot more. Well, I can't even say a lot more money because there's some people in college with these NIL deals and they're going crazy with it, but... Y'all get it. it when, you, when you're in the pros, they, they do things a lot differently. Um, he also talked about how uh, he's super comfortable. And he said the wide receiver coach and all the veterans, they make him feel really comfortable. And that's big right there. Because you, I'm sure any of y'all have been in a situation before where you may just start working at a new job or you may start going to a new school or something. And you're looking around and you're kind of nervous. And you just, you're not comfortable. And nobody's making you feel comfortable. I've certainly been there before. It's not a good feeling at all. It sucks. It, it is the worst. Um, and you could just feel like, man, like, what's going on? It's like, what is this? I hate it. So, but Zay talked about the flip side of that, saying everybody's making him feel comfortable. So that's a beautiful thing to hear. Um, he also said the goal is to win a Super Bowl. And he said that's been his goal since the Ravens drafted him back in April. So it was good to hear as well. And he said he still can't believe he's an NFL player and that it hasn't sunk in that he's playing with guys like Lamar and Mark Andrews and OBJ and all of them. He said it won't sink in until probably the, the, the first game of the season when they're, they're in a real game and he's watching all them do crazy stuff. He said then when he does something crazy too, he said that's when it'll probably sink in that he's playing with all these guys. But shout out to Zay Flowers, man. Um, obviously, it's a South Florida thing, but he did really remind me of Hollywood. Just hearing his mannerisms, hearing him speak and whatnot, he reminded me a lot of Hollywood. I miss my guy. He, he's, he's good people, man. Shout out to Hollywood, man. But hope he does well this year because, again, he was off to a really, really good start last year, but then he unfortunately got hurt. Uh, but anyway, Team Keep It Clean, it's been nice. It's been nice to have these presses again. Um, it's been a lot, a lot, and we haven't even covered everything that every single person in the press has got because Marcus Williams, he spoke today. We haven't, we haven't even got, well, when you're watching this, it will be yesterday. But um, I didn't even get a chance to watch that part of the presser yet. Didn't even watch Harbaugh's part of the presser yet. So I, I do appreciate, though, the, the Ravens, the way that they do things with those presses because they make them available to us, and they don't have to do that. That's something extra. It's not a requirement for fans to watch presses. No, man. But since the, Ra the Ravens make all of them available, well, 99% of the presses available to us. There's some that they don't. Uh, some you uh, you either got to go on an app or some that they just end up, you only see stuff like tweets and stuff from the reporters who are there and the, the media people who are there. Uh, but, 
the fact that they do again it makes you appreciate them more because it's something extra that they don't have to do but they do it so the big um big message that i got from this press especially from from odell beckham jr and zay flowers uh was just really about being grateful being grateful for the opportunity being grateful for what's right in front of you uh, and being grateful for what uh the future holds as well so team keep it clean i'm grateful for y'all I'm grateful for everything that y'all have done in the past. I'm grateful for everything that y'all do currently. And I'm grateful for anything that y'all might do uh, in the future as well. I appreciate y'all being good people. Um, I always appreciate y'all just being very uh, genuine too. Because uh, that's, that's real right there. Because somebody could fake being a good person. But you could tell when it's real. And it's real from y'all. So I always appreciate that about y'all. Thank you for always watching. Thank you for always listening to the videos. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on. Stuff has been busier than ever now, man. It's busier than ever, and it's it's not going to stop. Um, like I talked about before, shout out to anybody that went to the training camp practices. If you get a chance to go, please do. You'll love it. I promise you. Promise you. Um, so anyway, y'all keep your heads up. I know a lot of people going through a lot of different things, but keep your heads up, man. Try to stay positive with stuff. It ain't always easy. Trust me, we all know. It ain't always easy because life be trying you, man. Life will try you like crazy, man, but y'all keep your heads up, man. I love y'all, appreciate y'all, and we out.